Welcome back to the 42nd Annual Sun and Fun International Convention and Fly-In. I'm Ben Coleman, one of your hosts here on the Florida Aviation Network, and we're on www.floridaaviationnetwork.com. And we're all volunteer organization here, Jack, Phil, Jennifer. Jennifer, you're out of your seat. How can you work a camera when you're not sitting there? Well, they have three others as well. Okay, all right. And uh, this is live, and we are at the Sunday Fun Campus here in beautiful Lakeland Linda Regional Airport. And the beauty part of Sun and Fun every year, and it's sometimes it's not so much about coming to uh, look at all the beautiful aircraft, and it's not so much about watching the air show and all the dynamic performances and so forth, but it's seeing all the people that you enjoy being around, hanging around with, and you look, if you only see them once a year, it's always good to see them again. So it's more of a social event for, uh, for both the professionals as well as friends, family. Some folks have their family reunions here. It's a great place to have a reunion and a good place to go. As a matter of fact, this morning, uh, we had a lot of the dust knocked off of the wings of the airplanes from some, we call that liquid sunshine here in Florida. And some of the dust was knocked off of uh, a lot of airplanes. And I know this one lady has an airplane here that she was really, really, uh, she's very particular about her stuff. She really is. But we were able to break her way to, to come and talk with us <laughs> about what she's doing. And uh, anybody ever hear of Patty Wagstaff? Patty Wagstaff Air Shows? Well, if you haven't, this is Patty. Hi. Patty. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. You as well. Always good to it see you. It is good to see people here. That's what I look forward to the most, seeing my friends and it, people that you only do see once a year. So. Yeah. And you wish it was more, but uh, yeah. you know the years just start to flow. Yeah. And before you know it, yeah. it just seems like the folks that you saw last year, it was like a couple months ago. I know. I know. It's true. So, and yep. uh, Patty, uh, for, um, I don't know, that, that was really a, a, a tongue-in-cheek because everybody knows about Patty Wagstaff. Well, everybody knows about Patty Wagstaff's air you. shows <laughs> and, uh, and all of the things that you've accomplished in aviation through the Thank years. Thank you. And, the thing about Patty is she's always looking for something else to do yeah, and uh, true. She, she just she's not the type that kind of sits back and says well okay I've made it I've got all these no, awards never. And, yeah. uh, and I've accomplished this much and touched so many lives so I think I'm done what are you doing uh, Patty the next phase of your career Thanks. well I'm flying air shows um, and I'm writing for plane and pilot and I'm real excited about that I really enjoy that and um, plane and pilot has a new editor Robert Goyer and um, so he's been great to work with mm -hmm. and um, I am um, still working with the Kenya Wildlife Service pilots giving them training and hopefully this, this coming Kenya. winter in Kenya, Kenya for Kenya Wildlife Service. They patrol all the national parks and look for poachers and try and keep the poaching down. It's really tough right now. Um, and, um, and but what's been really exciting for me is that I started an aerobatic school mm -hmm. and upset training and um, in St. Augustine where I live. So I get to have my dogs with me every day and, and not be on the road quite as much. And, um, and we have a super decathlon and an extra and we've had just the most amazing students, really great people. I've enjoyed it more than I ever thought I would. So, well, yeah. and, and you're giving back. You are always yeah, giving back. I think it's important. I mean, you have to pass on, you know, what you can. And um, I have great instructors, and uh, we all really enjoy it. So. And, and you have my, post, my postcard there from the school. I just happen to have a postcard here, and yeah. I know that they're scrambling around the trailer. Quick, quick, yeah. zoom in on the postcard. Yeah, uh, cool. Um, so yeah, it's just a little advertising postcard, but best way to get in touch with us is to email us, and it's pattyaerobatics at gmail.com, and, um, and we'll send you some information and sign you up. So. The, uh, Tom, I just, li just lining it up, lining it up. There we go. Now we're square. There you go. Cool. And, uh, and this is, uh, how did you get that uh, email address? Um, Patty, Patty Aerobat Aerobatics. Aerobatics, yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, it is available, so yeah, oh. I took it. Somebody was sleeping. They, <laughs> they should have snagged that one. That's a and, good one. But the, uh, but I'm telling you, the uh, Patty, I have through the years that we've known each other, and I was just thinking back, uh, we back in '92, you were doing an air show at Sanford. Sanford, yeah. And I, I was didn't realize it was so long ago. Director of maintenance yeah. uh, at Comair. Yeah. And I was just kind of riding around in a golf cart and. I never met you. I'd heard about you, of course, but uh, and I heard somebody say mechanical problem and mechanical. Patty's not flying today. Do it on mechanical. Well, what 
th th it can't be anything that serious. She flew the airplane here. Um, oh, you, I think you had some plugs that were fouled out. And, Must have been, yeah. Uh, never forget, we, uh, we loaded up in the golf cart and ran over to the shop and yeah. uh, snagged some plugs out of uh, inventory. Yeah. And uh, went back, screwed them in, and you made the show. So you didn't even miss your slot. So uh, yeah, you really got to be on it when something like that happens. So yeah, you helped me out. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, always. I, I still. <laughs> I always got a set of plugs for Thanks. you. Thanks. Uh, and Patty, I was just admiring your. Uh, you know, my daughter's favorite color is purple. It's my favorite color too. Oh. There. Yeah, that's why I do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you. Do you remember? And also, just because I can. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> once I I'm using some volumizing hair. Uh, shampoo, <laughs> and once I get some more uh, some more hair up there, I might even color it too. You know, yeah, well, go for it. Do some streaks. I started with some streaks, and then just got a little more, you know, ambitious. And well, but actually, yeah. you, you, it's you. I mean, I really. think it is too. I get a lot of compliments on it. Yeah, you uh, know, do you from remember, strangers too. Do you remember your big hair days? Well, my hair's still really curly. I straighten it. <laughs> <laughs> but but I remember you had uh, you were just just I mean. It still is. Wow. I just keep it. it keep it straight <laughs> but I would always enjoy watching the cockpit footage yeah of, uh, some of the and, and it still bounces around up there oh uh, yeah, I mean you were cinched <laughs> in good but the hair yeah. was, was telling the story <laughs> uh, yeah and, uh, Patty uh, equestrian uh, yeah I'm not I, I am in between horses right now I just don't have time to ride so I don't have a horse at the moment but um, I sold my jumper and um, but I'm hoping to get another one in a year or so so mm -hmm. but I've been so busy with the school and Everything else I'm doing, I feel guilty. So you know, uh, not riding enough. So I miss it though. Well, now see, now that's the the true form of professionalism is you give so much of yourself that you feel guilty when you start taking time for yourself. But yeah, it, it, but yeah, but you have it, to. But you know, there's time for everything, I guess. Patty, how much uh, job-wise have you worked in aviation? You mean as I'm, I'm setting you up I here. had a job. I had one job. I tried a job. <laughs> Jobs. Um, yeah, but um, it was good. You know, I flew for Cal Fire and I was flying Air Attack in the LB-10, mm -hmm. and I did that for three seasons. And um, and now I'm working on becoming a seat pilot, which is single engine air tanker. And mm -hmm. I started flying the air tractor, the 802, and getting some training and doing some water drops. And um, I think they're going to make me do a little ag flying first, but I'm I'm working on it. And then I'll go be a seat pilot and fly fires. Well, I set you up. I should have given you a little bit of uh, intro into that. But okay. uh, even though you're out flying uh, uh, the water tankers uh, with Dyncor, I believe it's. I was flying, yeah, I was flying the air attack for Dyncor, yeah. Uh, really, you were getting paid, but it really wasn't work. It was more enjoyment. You, you now, know, the flying was fantastic. Day. I yeah. loved it. The lifestyle was difficult, yeah. and um, that's why I stopped. But, um, but the flying was fantastic, and I miss it. Well, I remember yeah. uh, I was with Dancor in yeah, Iraq. Yeah, you worked for them at the same and, time, and right? We were, yeah, yeah. We were we were all up the size of the yeah. world, but uh, yeah. uh, doing some valuable yeah. stuff. I yeah. tell you, and it's good to have my freedom back too. But I, I do miss the flying. Yeah. So, yeah. I know you would. Yeah. But so. uh, but hopefully, and uh, how many folks would realize that? Uh, well, there's a lot of folks that don't realize that they have the opportunity to go out and fly with you, and if not yeah. you personally, yeah, one of your one staff, of our instructors. Uh, people are funny. Some people don't want to fly with me at all, and um, apprehensive or yeah, intimidated, and or what? maybe a little intimidated, and, and especially if they're beginners, it doesn't help them necessarily to have me in the plane. Mm -hmm. um, and some people won't come unless they get to fly with me. So you never know. You know, it's it's mixed. But I fly with people. I I do quite a bit of instruction. I really enjoy it, and I have some advanced students that come from um, you know, Abu Dhabi and Italy and. Um, overseas to work on more advanced aerobatics and in the extra so I do a lot of that and I really enjoy it I mean flight instructions um, it's it's a real challenge and it's difficult and I've been a flight instructor since 1983 but I haven't mm -hmm. always done a lot of instruction you know mm -hmm. but um, but I've always kept it current and so I'm, I'm learning to be a better instructor every day you know learning techniques of how to explain things and and it's really fun, that part of it for me. I really enjoy the process of getting to be better and you know, and understanding people's personalities and what's gonna work for them. Mm -hmm. You really have to use a lot of psychology, you have to be insightful and find out what their motivations are and and um, so it's 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 always a challenge. Mm -hmm. you know? The the thing that's uh, you just mentioned in psychology, every now and then 
probably not by the time they get to your school because they, they want it so bad that they do have the right psyche, the right yeah. attitude. Right. But every now and then I, I come across some folks that they tell me they want to be a, an aircraft mechanic because I was involved with a lot of AP training there for a while. And uh, after I've talked with them for about 5, 10, 15 minutes, these people out there that they, they didn't want to get their hands dirty. Oh. <laughs> they they like working on airplanes, but they yeah. didn't like to get dirty. And yeah. so well, maybe if I get involved with avionics, it, that I don't have to get dirty for that, do I? Really? They don't want to get their hands dirty. That's really? That's unusual. Really? And right. they, they thought that because they like be working on horses or airplanes then. <laughs> <laughs> and and I just I had to try to find a nice polite way to say, you know this might. How are you about mathematics and and counting beans? You don't have to be too polite. No, you be blunt. Be blunt. This isn't for this you. This isn't for you. No. And, uh, <laughs> Do him a favor, right? <laughs> sure. Save him some time. It's Save money. him some time. Uh, and I think the integrity meter, from what I've seen, is coming up. There for a nice. while, there were some, there were some uh, unscrupulous folks uh, down around Miami that would go dumpster diving for aircraft parts. I think you're and always going to have a certain element of people that do that in anything, right? We we have really tried to clamp down on uh, yeah. un unapproved parts, Good. And dangerous parts. Good, uh, that's important. But and uh, then the the penalties are pretty stiff when you get caught. Yeah, doing. I've seen. I've read some art. You know, when I see some of the news releases about that, I'm I'm glad. Yeah, and, we and can't it have should that. be yeah. because that's 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 a, a, a very uh, uh, usurpatious way of killing people. Yeah, like really. It's just airport. one more way of killing people. Yeah. The, um, but it's good, and that's what keeps the integrity of aviation so strong, mm -hmm. is that, that people do come down hard on things like that. And it's, I think it's really important. And, yeah. and integrity. Uh, uh, yeah. I know that uh, you, I believe, what was your first air show, Hamilton, Ontario? I, um, the first Ontario? air show I went to was in Abbotsford. Um, BC, but I, I wasn't performing. I was just watching it. But I, I can only I remember one of your uh, historical documents. Uh, well, this took me back to Galaxy Quest, the historical documents. Uh, <laughs> the uh, you said that you had. Uh, you remember the first air show that you went to, and you said, "Wow, I would love to get out there and do that." Sometime. That's what I want to do. And yeah. uh, and it, you were able to make it happen. I just felt like I was on the wrong side of the fence. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. And that that type of enthusiasm, trying to exude that to our youth that are wandering around, they like to play video games. I don't know of a kid that doesn't like yeah, to play I like video them games, too. The <laughs> iPad, but, I love uh, video games. But they think that, well, uh, uh, there's surely there's nothing I could do with aviation. Well, and I think there's a lot of things you can expose people to that, mm -hmm. you know, how do you know if you didn't, I grew up around aviation, but not small planes, just airline stuff, but how do you know what's out there? I didn't even know about air shows mm -hmm. until I got my license and I went to an air show. So, um, and air shows are really helpful in exposing people to all kinds of aviation and aspects of aviation. So that's really, Im I think air shows are really important for that. But I mean, how do you know unless you've been exposed to it? So mm -hmm. you have to expose people to certain things to let them know what's out there, for sure. Uh, you know? Mental discipline, uh, physical conditioning. I mean, well, it, aviation it gives you that, oh. you know, if you get into it in any, whether it's A&P training or flying, it's, it gives you the discipline and it, and it gives you focus and it, it brings all those things together when you, even if you don't think that you have that. The, uh, when you're doing a routine in your air show routine, from the cockpit footage it looks rather violent. It is and violent. It looks, like it, is. it looks like it really, uh, yeah. some of the outside maneuvers, uh, yeah. you know, trying to pop the head off your shoulders. Uh, physical conditioning, how do you maintain yourself? It's really important. Uh, you have to do, I mean, it has to be your whole lifestyle, you know, from the way you eat, the way you sleep, take care of yourself, act, exercise, and I mix a lot of different things up from yoga to working out to bike, biking around, and, you know, it's the kind of thing where you, if you can take the stairs of the elevator, you take the stairs. So it's, it's a whole lifestyle choice. Plus, you have to be in the airplane flying all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not always easy. You don't always want to, and it beats you up, and you get tired and cranky. <laughs> so, uh, hot, yeah. sweaty, but that's yeah, part of it. Yeah, sweaty, and yeah. Uh, so, like, oh, I got to go practice. And then after a couple of weeks, it starts coming back, and it's yeah. really fun. Well, so, and uh, I'm glad you mentioned stairs. I take the stairs often, but it's usually down the yeah. stairs because <laughs> uh, I've been bodybuilding. Have you noticed? Um, yeah. I have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's all about carbs. 
It is, uh, yeah. yeah. It's and, about avoiding know, carbs. Eat a, a loaf of bread rather than a slice. Why just stop at a slice? Eat the whole loaf. <laughs> key lime pie. Oh, key lime pie. Mm. Oh, okay. oh. Oh, so good. Speaking of Key West and uh, Florida, I know you're located in the uh, San Augustine area. Yeah. The flight school. Yeah. You're well, it's not a flight school. Well, it is Aerobatic school. Aerobatic school. Yeah. Uh, do you spend any time in Lakeland? Maybe working with some of the high school kids here? Yeah, I have. I haven't in a while. I want to come back and do some more. I was giving some upset training to them because they get part of that as part of their scholarship program. They get an hour of upset training. And I get to know some of the kids that are flying today. And it's an amazing program. I love the high school here. The, um, the new hangar mm -hmm. is amazing. I went it over there done. yesterday and I was just blown away by how fabulous it looks. It's beautiful. And the kids are so excited, and, you know, it's, um, it's, I'd like to see more of that around. I have been to some other high, St. Augustine High School and Daytona Beach High School, both have aviation academies embedded in them. And, um, it, it, do you hear that, Patty? Do you hear that just went over? Mm -hmm. That's the sound of freedom. <laughs> That's what they, remember the movie when they yeah, said uh, the B-51s? Yeah. What, I hear the airplanes, no, that's the sound of freedom. <laughs> that's right. But uh, please do come in. What they've yeah. done over there at the high school is... It's great. And they have great people running that program. And they're really dedicated, you know. So I'm really proud of those kids. Well, let's, yeah. uh, let's do more to uh, get some more kids. Yeah. Not only that you meet here, to yeah. have them come up through. And, and upset training, uh, uh, not everybody understands what upset training is. And it's, yeah. it's training that you get to fly. If you don't get to fly with Patty, you get upset. <laughs> that's upset training, isn't it? That's, isn't that upset that's training? That's right. That's what I tell people. Talk us through just to give me about a 30, your, your elevated pitch on so what is upset training. We believe training. that if you know how to do aerobatics, there are no unusual attitudes, right? So, but not everybody wants to do aerobatics or thinks that that's really valuable. So, especially corporate, you know, corporate mindset is we want to learn how to recover from something that's not planned, like a loop or something, but something that's not planned. You get into an up, upset situation and you start to lose control, how do you maintain control? So it's a little different than aerobatic training. But, so we blend upset training into aerobatic training for everybody. And um, it's, it's important because loss of control accidents are the number one cause of, loss of control is the number one cause of accidents in commercial aviation today. True. It's been identified as that. So anything we can do to help that, and um, that's what we do. Well, Patty, can, can you? There's a lot of freedom up there today. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Patty, back me up on this. When I, uh, uh, it always comes up when people find out I'm in aviation. Yeah, I, I really want to learn how to fly. I said, well, learn how to fly, but do it the right way. Uh, you want to you know what a tail dragger aircraft is, or a tail wheel, yeah. conventional aircraft. Yeah. You need to really cut your teeth on it. If you really want to do it right, start with the glider. A lot of people want to. They're hard to find. Start with the glider. Start with the glider. Energy control. Manage your energy. Every landing is an emergency. That's right. So if you get used to it, because you can't go around a glider. Unless you're a motor glider, okay, got it. But the tail wheel, if you learn how to fly a tail wheel, that's just stick and rudder. Gives you good stick and rudder skills right through the beginning. And they're things that stick with you your whole career. And I've talked to some airline pilots. And they said, you know, really, I've got, found myself in many situations. If I didn't have good stick and rudder skills, there's a chance I was going to slap a wing on a runway. Well, I think that's where the whole loss of control thing is is coming from: is people that don't have necessarily good stick and rudder skills, so they're not used to, you know, something unusual or an unusual attitude, and mm -hmm. that's where they get in trouble. And so, if you start with that, you know, in World War II, you couldn't even solo until you could do a three-turn spin, loop and roll, and a half Cuban. Three turns spin and roll out on the heading. Mm -hmm. And come out on the heading. Sure. Yeah. And uh, nowadays so people, oh, I have to, I've got to do spins. Oh, I don't like spins. Yeah, they scare me. And that's the oh. reason a lot of people come to our school yeah. is because they're afraid of it, yeah. and they but and they don't want to be. So I really admire them, and I really admire pilots that fly a lot of times on autopilot. They do a lot of instruments. They mm -hmm. they don't look outside a lot, and they really want to. They're they're worried about it, so mm -hmm. they want to expand their envelope, and it's hard for them. Mm -hmm. So I really admire them. Doing that. Well, what what is the typical uh, syllabus for you? Scenario. I'm sure you have an introduction. Yeah, we have we have levels. introduction, but we have um, we have a one day course, two hours of flight time. That's this called in the decathlon. In decathlon, that's called a confidence course. We can also do it in the extra, and um, generally in the decathlon. We like to start everybody in the decathlon. It's a really good trainer, and um, and then.
and then move them into the extra. We have a five hour course, and it's four hours in the decathlon and one in the extra, and we have a 10 hour course. And then we can do a la carte depending on the person and tail. Everybody, it's tailored for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a syllabus, but some people move through it faster than others, you know? Mm -hmm. And some people take a long time depending on what their experience is. So um, we had a young guy a couple weeks ago, he's 16, flies his family to Tabria. And he just did great. He was wonderful. And when he got home, I think his dad bought him a decathlon. So, pretty exciting for him. So, oh, uh, we well get we, we get student pilots. We get real experienced pilots. We get airline pilots. We're doing some um, corporate corporate upset training for um, corporations, and I'm trying to do more of that. So we're expanding into the, the corporate side of things with a slightly different syllabus for the for you know citation pilots mm -hmm. and so on. So. Well, between you and Lee Lauterbach doing his uh, work yeah. with the jets, uh, yeah. it's a perfect blend of the two yeah. different categories of aircraft. Yeah, and, it is. Uh, it's really good. Well, yeah. Patty, I assure you that if I get a chance to come up and fly with you for some upset Absolutely. training, yeah. it's going to take a long time because yeah. I'm going to want to fly with you for quite a while. All right. <laughs> so All right. We can do it. It's always good. Thank you Thanks, so ben. much for Come and fly with us for and, uh, sure. And we look forward to seeing you fly out there today. Thank you. Yeah. Or today or tomorrow? Today. Perfect. Today and Saturday. Marine Corps Day and Saturday is. Oh, it's it's all the armed services on Saturday. Oh, is it all good? And okay. then the uh, Air Force is on Sunday. Okay. Okay. Cool. All to our veterans out there. Thank you so Thank much, you. Patty. And again, uh, another compelling interview here on the set of the Florida Aviation Network. I'm Ben Coleman, one of your hosts, and we'll see you next interview. <laughs>